Breaking news right now, this is a live look at a huge police presence at 27th and Beecher. It shows a silver car right in the center of your screen smashed. And we've just learned the Milwaukee County Medical Examiner was called to the scene. This all began at 1.45 this morning. Now the Milwaukee County District Attorney was spotted on scene. That means that this is very serious. Police have been conducting multiple interviews. We reached out to uh, the Milwaukee Police for information, but so far they have not returned our calls. We hope to learn more very soon. Good morning to you. I'm Julia Fellow. Hope you're doing well this morning and are safe at home. As you wake up this morning, it's going to feel a lot different once you step outside. Let's get to meteorologist Marissa Walzen. Marissa, good morning. Good morning. Yes, we are looking at a cooler start this morning. We're also looking at a start with less humidity across the area, so pretty nice weather. But let's take a look. First, we do have our August full moon happening right now as we speak. It's the sturgeon moon. Uh, alternate names, the fruit moon, the grain moon. It is named after uh, at one point we had a lot of sturgeon fish in our uh, waterways, excuse me, in uh, the United States at this time of year. But now, of course, those numbers have depleted. But a little known fact about sturgeon fish, they can grow to about six feet uh, in length and then also be up to 200 pounds. So very big fish. Oh, there's a peak of the moon. We had a better view just about literally a minute ago. Unfortunately, we are seeing some clouds out there. But if you look now, you'll be able to see the moon, at least a glimpse of it before it sets at about 556 this morning. Temperatures, you're waking up about 5 to 15 degrees cooler than what we saw yesterday. So that puts many of us in the 60s. 60s, the low 60s at that. We are looking at 61 right now in Waukesha, even 58 in Watertown, 56 in Beaver Dam. Closer to the lakefront, a little bit warmer where we are in the upper 60s, but at least we're not in the 70s to start off the day. And temperatures today overall will be cooler. Highs only topping out in the 70s this afternoon. I'll have a close look at your Sunday and also look ahead at the week coming up, coming up in just a bit, Julia. Okay, thank you. Now on to the COVID-19 fight in Wisconsin. The seven day average of new cases is on the rise. There's a map that we're going to show you that shows the level of community spread across the state. According to the CDC, most of the state is experiencing a high level of virus transmission, the most severe of the four categories. Looking at the vaccination rate of people eligible for the shot 12 and up in our state, half have completed the vaccine series and more than 53% have gotten at least one dose. Within the coming weeks, tens of millions of students across the U.S. will head back to class. Some have already started in-person learning. Maya Rodriguez reports on the critical questions that parents need to ask as she looks into what lessons schools have already learned and in some cases have not. On this school campus, it's so great to be back. Final preparations are underway for the return of students in just a few short weeks. And we are looking forward to a very successful school year. George Farmer is the principal of Creativity Collaboratory Charter School, known as C3 in Elmer, New Jersey. It's a campus with nearly 200 students in grades fifth through eighth. We first visited the school in the early spring when COVID vaccines were not as widely available as they are now. There were a lot of protocols that were in place that were successful. That includes limiting class sizes to 12 students and placing air filtration systems in each classroom. They're now also setting up outside tents for occasional outside classes. And there is a state ordered mask mandate. We will comply with that mask mandate and whether students are vaccinated or unvaccinated, all our students will be required to wear a mask this school year. But for parents trying to navigate sending their kids back to school during yet another year of COVID, the rules around the country are all over the map, literally. While the CDC recommends masks for students nationwide, there is no federal mandate. In Florida and Texas, governors there have banned mask mandates, though some school districts are defying that order. And in Texas, the ban is temporarily on hold because of pending litigation. Colorado and Michigan are recommending masks in schools, but not requiring them. While in California, like New Jersey, masks are mandated in all schools. 
We are in year three of pandemic education, and yet we still have not figured out how to be more nimble in responding to the needs of our students, to the needs of our families, and to the needs of our educators who are working so vigilantly in the field. Annette Campbell Anderson is a former educator and now deputy director for the Johns Hopkins Center for Safe and Healthy Schools. The center has been tracking school reopenings and COVID protocols across the country. So far, what it seems like our schools have learned is that we can either be open fully or we can be closed fully. We don't have anything in the gray area in between and we need to work on developing backup plans. She says that means it will be up to parents to get more involved and find out what happens if a student in their child's class tests positive for coronavirus and have their own backup plans to deal with it. They should find out what the plan is for students in those classrooms. But you also need to ask about the spaces like the hallways, the stairwells, the cafeteria, spaces that are not typically monitored by teachers. We don't know where the pandemic is going to lead us in the next three to six months. So we have to be prepared for that. We provided our tents for our outdoor learning space. Back at C3 in New Jersey. Educators are vitally important. Principal George Farmer says they have their plans in place, including quarantine quarantining a class and moving it to remote learning if there is a COVID case. I think that that's critical for our students to, to be able to be in person with their teacher, but be also be safe at the same time. As they face another pandemic school year together. In Elmer, New Jersey, I'm Maya Rodriguez. Going in depth here, despite surging coronavirus cases, a new survey shows overwhelming majority of parents plan to send their child back to school. The survey commissioned by the Rockefeller Foundation shows that the end of July, nine out of 10 parents plan to have their child in person learning. That's up by more than 5% from May. The survey also showed 60% of parents said they want more information about what schools are doing to keep their child safe. For more information on where to get a vaccine, testing, masking information for school districts near you, we have all that information at tmj4.com slash coronavirus. Up next on TMJ4 News today, evacuations of Afghans continue after the Taliban seized control of the country. The latest we know this morning about the developing situation this morning in Afghanistan. And once again, as we head to break, we are staying on top of that breaking news. This is an active scene, a live look at 27th and Beecher. We have just learned from the Milwaukee County Medical Examiner's Office, a 31-year-old man died here overnight. We are working to learn more. Stay with us. In today's headlines, evacuations of Afghans continue after the Taliban seized control of the country. Richard Ingle reports from Doha, Qatar. This is one of the biggest evacuations in U.S. military history, and it is certainly one of the most complicated because now the U.S. is trying to pull people out of a country that has collapsed and they are trying to extract them from the one last remaining place that is controlled by U.S. forces, the military side of Kabul airport. And there are serious security concerns to get to that airport, security risks for Afghans because they have to go through Taliban controlled area with whichever documents they may have because many of them had not finished the application process to get into the United States. Once the people manage to get on their base with or without documentation, the troops there don't have the time, don't have the capacities to process all of these people. They are moving them along, moving them onto airplanes. Initially, many people were being brought to Doha, Qatar, but Qatar was filling up. So now, Ramstein Air Base in Germany, which is another major U.S. base, is starting to receive flights. The larger question remains, what happens? Where are they going to go next? Once you start understanding who has been brought out, who is getting on these planes, you have to figure out a place ultimately, whether it's the United States or another country, where they're going to be settled. Richard Engel, NBC News, Doha, Qatar. The time right now is 542 this Sunday morning. Much more still to come. Making room in the crew, how the Brewers celebrated Hispanic and Latino heritage at last night's game. And at 542, we're taking a live look outside. A beautiful morning. We'll have more coming up in your seven-day forecast.
And as we head to break, let's take another look at the scene near 27th and Beecher. The Milwaukee County Medical Examiner just told us that a 31-year-old man died on scene here at 27th and Beecher. We hope to learn more coming up. Again, there's a huge police scene at 27th and Beecher. It shows a car smash. Is that silver car towards the center of your screen? Milwaukee County Ex Medical Examiner was called to the scene. This all happened at 1.45 this morning, and we're told that the district attorney is on scene. So this is very serious. And the medical examiner also confirming that a 30-year-old, 31-year-old man died on scene here. We are hoping to learn more. At 545, we're switching, switching gears and getting a check outside with meteorologist Marissa Walzen. Good morning, Marissa. Good morning. We are looking at our final look at the full moon out there. This is August's full moon. It's the sturgeon moon. You can see when we get to the yellow color as it gets closer to the horizon, just because there's a lot more atmosphere that we're looking through. So the light is getting bent just a bit. That's why it's kind of a, has that yellow and orange color. A very cool sight. All you have to do is take a look to the west southwest. You'll be able to see the moon there. Sun uh, moon set, excuse me is in just about 10 minutes, so you just have 10 minutes to see it before it does go below the horizon. It's 69 in Milwaukee right now, a more refreshing morning to start off the day. We are looking at temperatures actually staying pretty nice throughout the entire day. If you go into the final day of Irish Fest, get ready for some sunshine and temperatures only in the upper 70s. No threat for showers or storms like we had yesterday roll through in the late afternoon and the early evening. It's actually very quiet across most of the Midwest. We are going to stay quiet today and for most of the day tomorrow, but but then finally, we are going to see the return of some rain showers, maybe some thunderstorms by midweek. But it's very quiet across the area. Weather wise, we are looking at mostly clear skies from the lakefront all the way to some of our western counties. Expect this weather to continue today. There are a couple clouds out there this morning. Those clouds will continue to move out of the area, but overall, really sunshine ruling the day. This is a look at the lunch hour. And as we move into the afternoon, still very nice. And we keep it very nice all the way through the evening. So get out and about today, especially if you really can't stand the humidity because today we are looking at drier air in place, so it should feel a bit better. If you do have plans though to go to Lake Michigan, this is where you're going to need to be concerned. We are going to look at some wind gusts today at about 15, 20 and maybe even up to 30 miles per hour closer to the lake, all out of the northeast, which means the winds are coming on shore, which leads to large waves out over Lake Michigan. So there is a high swim risk today. Large waves about four to seven feet are possible, so I would avoid swimming today along Lake Michigan because of the dangerous conditions, but anything else on land will be just fine. Bike ride, walk, run, going to a pool will be much better or a local smaller lake. We'll have mostly sunny skies today. Again, 78 for the high temperature, about 10 degrees cooler than what we saw yesterday, but also the humidity will be down quite a bit, so it'll feel better. Tonight we follow the 62 towards the lakefront inland spots in the upper 50, so even a bit cooler than where we were at this morning, but your seven day forecast showing the heat returning 85 on Monday Monday up to 86 and then even 88 on Wednesday. We'll have a chance for some showers Monday night, but more so into Tuesday and Wednesday. Now slight chance for showers on Thursday, but just get ready for that heat. But before you get ready for the heat, just try to enjoy today's weather, right? Yeah. One day of relief. Yeah, just enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Green Bay Packers off to a rocky start in the preseason. They lost to the New York Jets yesterday 23 to 14. Green and gold are just warming up. They have one more preseason game before football season starts for real. They're heading to New York to take on the Bills this coming Saturday. Let's take a live look at American Family Field this morning. Brewers are getting ready to take on the Nationals again. Series is now split 1-1 after the Brewers brought home a win yesterday. Final score 9-6 Milwaukee. Game three of the series starts this afternoon at 1-10. Brewers fans had a ball Saturday celebrating Latino and Hispanic heritage at American Family Field. Fans sported limited edition jerseys and translates to Brewers in Spanish. Local fans from the Latino Hispanic community gathered ahead of the game to enjoy cultural traditions and music. It feels like we are validated and, and I'm, I'm really, really proud. Very nice. Hispanic Heritage Month kicks off officially September 15th. Brewers have been working to include more of our Milwaukee community, hosting Pride Night in June, a Negro League tribute in July, and Cerveceros Day ahead of Hispanic Heritage Month, which starts next month once again. Up next, keeping your heart healthy, a push from the American Heart Association to get you to keep up with your team 
and checkups as the pandemic goes on. 5.53 on this Sunday morning. A beautiful sight here over Port Washington. We are looking at a couple clouds out there over Lake Michigan, but overall a lot of clearing skies and we will have a lot of sunshine today and we're also looking at cooler temperatures, less humidity. It's going to be a great Sunday. Again, I was saying that the, if you had to choose between the two days, Saturday or Sunday, Sunday is definitely going to be the better day this weekend to get out and about unless you have to do some chores because who wants to do some chores? The weather's not going to be an excuse. You can't say, oh, it's going to rain or thunderstorm. I can't go mow the lawn. Not an excuse today. As we take a look at our dew points this morning, oh, this is so nice to see. Most of us are looking at dew points in the mid 50s as you're waking up. If you remember yesterday, actually dew points were still near 70 degrees right at the lakefront, but we are in the upper 50s right now. 58 in Racine and Milwaukee. Same thing in Port Washington. Inland spots in the mid 50s. Unfortunately, though, it's a one day only event because as we move into the next couple of days, expect our dew points to quickly climb back up. We're back into the upper 60s, near 70 degrees as we move into tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday, really seeing that climb. Temperatures will also climb too, so it's going to be hot and humid. We will have a chance for some thunderstorms, though, both Tuesday and Wednesday, but not today. Again, if you're going to AmFam Field for the third game of the series, first pitch is at 110, 78 and sunny. The roof is closed right now, but I bet you it'll open it up because we are expecting dry conditions today today. I'll have a close look at those thunderstorms though again coming up in just about 20 minutes. Julia. All right, in today's health, the American Heart Association doesn't want the pandemic to keep you from seeing your doctor for checkups. Now the organization launched its campaign called Doctor, It's Been Too Long. It's to remind you of the importance of routine visits. You see your doctor is more important to manage the progression of any condition you may have. The blood tests haven't been happening over the over the COVID year and a half. So people's control for diabetes, we don't know where it is. People are on medicines for blood pressure, which need close monitoring for electrolytes. Dr. Reshi Gomez says it's easier to treat a condition when it's caught early. All these conditions that people had, they have risk factors for other bigger things. I know we've talked in the past about um, hypertension being a risk factor for heart attacks, hypertension being a risk factor for strokes, same with diabetes, being respected for both of those things. The American Heart Association says when you go to the doctor, it's important to keep a detailed list of your medication and also let your doctor know if you've had any lab work done since your last visit so they can request it and go over it with you. Up next on TMJ4 News today, why doctors believe some children are spreading the virus more quickly and what this means for families as the pandemic continues. And as we head to break, we're taking a live look at our top story this morning. As the sun comes up near 27th and Beecher, they've been there since 1.45 this morning. We have new information just into our newsroom coming up at the top of this next hour. Breaking news, a huge police presence near 27th and Beecher. It shows a smashed car and the Milwaukee County Medical Examiner was called to the scene. This happened at 1.45 this morning. Listen to the scanner from Greenfield Police. It hit one of the left leg, one of the finger. Someone in the chest. Again, we are trying to learn more. Police have been conducting multiple interviews. We've reached out to Greenfield Police for information since that was what was caught on the scanner and we are hoping to learn more. Good morning, you're watching TMJ4 News Today. I'm Julia Fellow alongside meteorologist Marissa Walls and what a difference compared to the other morning. Oh my goodness, it's so much nicer outside I'm even stepping funny. and I come in at about 1 or 2 a.m. And yesterday morning I was wearing still like shorts and a t-shirt. Uh, today I was like, well, maybe I'll put like a light coat on. I don't right. know, but it was like comfortable. It wasn't gross and hot and humid still in the middle of the night. This morning it's a great start. Uh, weather wise, we are looking at a beautiful sight as we take a live look over Milwaukee right now. We have now lost the moon. It has moved its way below uh, the horizon. It was a really cool moon set. The moon was like a very orange red color. I posted the last couple of frames of the moon set on Twitter and Facebook if you want to look at that, but a nice sight out there. You're going to need your sunglasses today. We are now looking at sunrise happening in just about four or five minutes from now. We are going to have a lot of sunshine, a few clouds this morning, but again, by the end of the day, look at that mostly clear to clear skies. So some great weather expected right now. There are a couple of clouds hard to see out 
out there, but most of us are looking at actually fairly clear skies already to start off your day. Your coffee forecast based solely on the temperatures. Medium cup of coffee only because it's cooler today than what we've had over the last couple of days. Most of us are starting off in the 60s, some of us even in the low 60s, and some of us even in the 50s this morning. A very refreshing start. So as you step out the door again, it's going to be much nicer than what we've had over the last few days. This weather, though, is not going to last. We are going to see temperatures today climb into the upper 70s, but it's the only day on the seven day where high temperatures are in the 70s. I'll have a close look at what you can expect for the week ahead. Coming up in just a bit. Julia. All right, to coronavirus coverage now. We're learning more about COVID transmission among families with children. New research published in JAMA Pediatrics suggests that babies and toddlers are more likely to spread this virus to people in their house than teens. Figures from more than 6,200 households in Canada broke down the age of children. You can see the older the children are, they're more likely to contract COVID, but when you look at secondary infections within the house, it's the infants to three-year-olds that had the highest odds of transmitting it to other family members. And, you know, it's really thought that because these kids may, you know, not feel well, that there's a lot of cuddling and holding of these kids that allows for greater transmission. While younger children are not eligible for vaccines just yet, emergency youth authorization is likely coming at the end of the year for ages 5 to 11 and early next year for even younger children. Pediatric infectious disease doctor Tina Tan is seeing increased rates of hospitalization in children with COVID in Chicago. That's where she practices and across our country. She sees the new booster strategy as a way to further protect young children and everyone in the household. Those individuals who can receive a booster, they're much more likely to be those individuals that are out and about in the community. So that's going to decrease their risk for actually contracting COVID and bringing it back to the household. Looking at the vaccine rate of people eligible for the shot 12 and up in our state, half have completed the vaccine series and more than 53% have gotten at least one dose. To stay up to date with coronavirus news or find a vaccination site near you, head to tmj4.com slash coronavirus. At 6.03, tomorrow marks one year since a police officer shot and paralyzed Jacob Blake. This weekend, Blake's family joined supporters at a rally in Kenosha. Bruce Harrison shares the demands of those who gathered. Blake's family says they realize it may take a very long time to achieve the justice they seek for Jacob, but they're not going to stop fighting no matter what. No justice, no peace! Jacob Blake Sr., the father of Jacob Blake, at a Civic Park rally. We're not asking, we're demanding that all brown people are treated as our Caucasian counterparts. He's become a prominent voice against racial discrimination and police violence since a police officer shot his son seven times in the back a year ago Monday. The white officer, Rustin Chesky, claimed he feared for his life. An independent investigation into the incident ruled Chesky's use of force was justified. He was never charged. Chesky's since returned to work, though police tell TMJ4 he's not yet working out in the community. It's unconscionable, and that's what we're fighting for, not just for Little Jake, but all the Little Jakes across Kenosha and across this country. Kenosha Mayor John Antaramian recently said in a statement he's confident Kenosha has moved forward to unify and heal. Some at the rally still fear division. I'm hoping for change in my community that some of the bigotry and unfairness that occurs and corruption, whether it be our police force or sheriff's department or whatever part of it that people are being made aware of, we can clean it up. The Kenosha Police Department said from October, all officers will wear body cameras. And following the police killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis, police have been tasked by the mayor to implement de-escalation tactics. Following both Floyd's killing and Blake's shooting, Protesters flooded the streets, some peaceful and others violent. Deshaun Foster from Kenosha brought his daughter to the rally. It's just important for me for her to, you know, know and understand where she comes from, what she represents, who we are, no matter what anybody tries to tell her. Bruce Harrison, TMJ4 News. The Kenosha mayor also sent us a statement that reads in part more than ever before. We are investing in our people, our infrastructure and our business development the essential elements to create a thriving Kenosha. 
for all. To read the mayor's full statement and hear more perspectives, visit TMJ4.com slash 360 or search 360 on the TMJ4 News streaming app. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Here's Chuck Todd with a preview. The chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan continues after the Taliban took control much more rapidly than administration officials claim they expected. The U.S. is scrambling to safely evacuate Americans and those Afghans that helped us during the war with the help of thousands of U.S. troops. So what does this chaos mean for America's global standing and for the president's job approval rating among the American public? I'll talk to the National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan about the administration's approach and Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney of Wyoming about her perspective on the withdrawal, something she did not want to see happen. And pediatric and COVID cases and hospitalizations are all rising at alarming rates just as kids are returning to schools. But with some Republican governors doubling or even tripling down on trying to ban local school districts from instituting mask mandates, how far is the Biden administration willing to go to ensure that schools are safe and can do their own health protocols? I'll talk to the Secretary of Education, Miguel Cardona, about the plans for an unpredictable school year. It's all ahead this Sunday on Meet the Press. You can watch Meet the Press at 8 this morning here on TMJ4 News. Up next, Americans are seeing rent prices spike all across the country. But why? We look into some of the underlying issues. And we are staying on top of breaking news at 27th and Beecher. Once again, we have just learned from Milwaukee County Medical Examiner's Office, a 31-year-old man died on scene. And it appears from dispatch that an officer was involved. We hope to learn more details soon. In today's headlines at 610, typical rent prices are up. 7% since last year. That's according to Zillow. High demand is even starting bidding wars in some places with people offering above the listed rent price. There was a family that came in and said, yeah, we want to be in the school district. We tried to buy a home and we couldn't do it. And we want this and we're going to pay you, you know, X amount more per month just because we want to be here. This is a really individual decision and not something that, you know, we have a lot of data um, to understand exactly what the you know, pros and cons of this are. The National Apartment Association believes remote workers and multiple generations looking to rent at the same time is driving this uptick. So baby boomers want to take advantage of the housing market and downsize. And they've seen a lot of Gen Zers landing their first job and trying to move into their first place. If you are having trouble finding an affordable place that meets your expectations, try to not only focus on necessities, but know what your options are in advance. So to really understand, you know, I need two bedrooms versus I want two bedrooms is going to help people kind of narrow down their options and really focus in on what they're looking for. I would say that at least 90 days before your lease expires and perhaps longer, depending upon your market and how, how active it is, have a conversation with the property management company and ask them what the rental rates are, ask them what the renewals are going to be. So you understand your options well in advance. Both housing experts we spoke to expect the rental market to stabilize soon. Up next, New England on high alert. Hurricane Henri is traveling up the Atlantic coast when we can expect landfall. And I'll show you the current radar for Hurricane Henri, but we are not worried about that here in the Midwest or in Southeast Wisconsin. We are looking at a great day ahead. Your golfing forecast, excellent. I almost bumped it to good just based on the winds. It is going to be a bit breezy today, but overall less humid and cooler. I'll break down your Sunday and again, have a look at Henri next. At 6.15 this morning, we are staying on top of this breaking news at 27th and Beecher. This all started at 1.45 this morning, and it ended with a 31-year-old man who is dead on scene. We are hoping to learn more. A large police presence, as you can see. Milwaukee County District Attorney John Chisholm is even spotted on scene. We hope to learn more soon. Preparations continue in the Northeast as well, with Tropical Storm Henri gets closer to making landfall. The storm is expected to arrive on Long Island or Southern England, New England later today. Yikes, meteorologist Marissa Walzen.
Yeah, that is exactly right. The storm is just offshore right now. It has been downgraded to a tropical storm. It was a considered a hurricane just about an hour ago, but the recent uh, uh, movement of the hurricane hunter through the storm has indicated that sustained winds are about 70 miles per hour, which is four miles per hour below what a category one hurricane would be. So still a strong tropical storm. It's moving to the north at about 18 miles per hour. Here's a look at the couple of the models showing the tracks of what uh, tropical storm Henri is likely to do. It is expected to still move north and then get picked up by the jet stream and get pushed off to the east, but really going to see a lot of rain through some of the spots already seeing quite a bit of rain through Connecticut and Rhode Island, southern Massachusetts, and then even over into portions of eastern Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Looking at the eye of the storm right here, not very defined, very uh, common with tropical storms because they're weaker. You really don't get that defined eye with the clouds or the rain, but you can see it is just offshore here uh, from Rhode Island and Connecticut, so likely to see landfall within about the next probably two to three hours. So be prepared for that for them. For us, though, our weather is going to be much more quiet. Let's bump over to our area across the area. We're looking at mostly clear skies this morning. We did have a beautiful view of the full moon, but the moon has now set. You'll be able to see a nearly full moon as the moonrise happens later tonight at about 850. So just take a look to the east for that should be a pretty cool sight too because the moon will be rather big and still orange, even though it's technically not at its full face. As we move throughout the day today, we'll keep it mostly clear. A couple of passing clouds, but overall looking at a great Sunday in terms of sky cover, but also in terms of temperature and then the feeling of the air. We've had very humid weather over the last couple of days. Today, not going to be the case. We're waking up this morning in the 60s in most spots, even upper 50s as you work your way farther from the lakefront. So a cooler start this morning. Get out and about early as again, we are looking at some nice weather. Temperatures will climb throughout the day, but we're going to stop at about 78 degrees, 11 degrees cooler than what we saw yesterday. But dew points are also going to be in the upper 50s this afternoon rather than the low 70s. So again, it's going to feel so much better outside in terms of the dryness of the air. It won't be too dry though. Don't worry. Monday, looking at mostly sunny skies. We warm up again. We're up to 85. Dew points also climb back into the upper 60s. We'll have a chance for some showers and thunderstorms Tuesday and Wednesday. It gets very warm and it's going to be humid both of those days as well. We are looking at dew points in the low to mid 70s with temperatures into the upper 80s. Julia, that's going to be suffering weather for yeah. sure. All right, now to the rebound. College seniors are preparing to get a job with nearly half of their college career done remotely and a job market flipped upside down. Amanda Misiagata, he she shows us how they should expect uh, what's to come with landing a position. You can land job offers without applying online, without even being on the job market. Here's how you do it. To reach the next generation of job seekers, Madeline Mann meets them where they are. Next time you apply for a job online, try this. And where they are is TikTok and YouTube, where she runs her career advice channels as the self-made millennial. Career strategist and human resources professional. But just as a way to reach job seekers is changing, so is the job search. To say that the job landscape has changed is a complete understatement. Rising college seniors are no strangers to change. The pandemic had forced schools to go remote and many traditional internship opportunities were not available. Though the latter half of their college experience was plagued with obstacles, the silver lining is that so many companies are hiring. Well, the demand is definitely high. There's lots of jobs for a variety of reasons. Companies reduced headcount last year. They're growing again. Brandy Britton is a district president for Robert Half, a human resources consulting firm. She says the demand for employees is making employers work harder to attract applicants by doing things like shortening their hiring process and offering higher wages. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average wage for non-managers is $25.83. That's up almost 8% from the start of the pandemic. However, the fastest growing wages can be found in industries like hospitality and retail, where wages are up around 10%. So are jobs for blue collar workers. With all these openings and many in the corporate world being remote, it could be hard for someone new to the working world to get a sense of the culture or fit of a job. Britain suggests looking into contract work where you can get experience, but don't necessarily have to commit long term. And they're saying, okay, 
I like this industry. I think I want to go with this industry versus that industry. And normally you wouldn't have that opportunity. So what things can college seniors be doing right now to set themselves up for success? Using the skills they gained in remote school and being plugged into this tech-focused world can add weight to their resume. It could be that you've built your own website or have built a social media following and you're using certain tactics, some marketing tactics, and you can use that as work samples. All of these things are really powerful. No matter what the industry may be, the future for the class of 2022 looks brighter than the tough years they endured to get there. I'm Vanessa Bashania reporting. In today's tech news, Twitter is introducing several new tweaks to its direct messages. Set to roll out in the coming weeks, users will be able to share the same tweet with up to 20 different accounts separately. Twitter says that could lead to fewer accidental group chats. The company is also adding a quick scroll button on the mobile app so you can jump to the most recent message when you look through any past posts. Facebook is testing Reels, Instagram's version of TikTok, short form videos in a new feed of the main Facebook app. If you're enrolled in the test, you'll see clips appear. In addition to watching Reels on platform, you can record them directly from your app. The company says the test is in response to growing interest in the format of short videos. Or they're just trying to copy TikTok. I know, oh my gosh, this is too much. <laughs> no. Trending today, here's something you don't see every day, a racehorse running down the highway. Officials at Ellis Park in Kentucky say the two-year-old Philly, bold and sassy, bucked her jockey and then bolted from the race. Let's see. Mm. Oh, God. The race park at around the time of Saturday's first race, the horse was later spotted along Highway 40. That's near Evansville, Indiana. The Posey County Sheriff was eventually able to get the bold and bossy to come down and calm down. She was checked out by a veterinarian and officials say that she's doing well and reunited with her owner. Aww, she they can get scared pretty easy. I know going in the wrong direction though too, but thank goodness that's that's a crazy sight. I could never imagine if you saw that in sure. the race gear. I know that's the thing too. All right. Well, people are happier when they pet or cuddle with a dog and there's science to back it up. Researchers tested how people's moods changed after different interactions with dogs. They found physical touch with the dog caused significant improvements in the person's well being. Just being around dogs and interacting with the dog's owner also helped boost a person person's mood and I would say yes this is a definitely accurate study I would say that yeah I, yeah. I get so happy when my I dog know they just love you so much right. and so you love them just as much. unconditional love yes sure. mm -hmm. all right much more still to come on TMJ4 news today full half hour of news your top stories next students getting ready to head back to class across our area in the coming weeks the lessons school have learned as we enter another academic year amid this coronavirus pandemic Let's take a live look outside at Waukesha. Feeling better out there. We'll have more coming up. And as we had to break another look at the scene at 27th and Beecher, we're told that Greenfield police are involved in this incident. We reached out to them, haven't heard back. We hope to share more coming up right after this. That breaking news, a huge police scene near 27th and Beecher. It shows a car smashed at the center of your screen. My goodness. The Milwaukee County Medical Examiner was called to the scene at about 1.45 this morning. They say that a 31-year-old man died. Listen to what was caught on police scanner moments after shots were fired. It hit one of the left leg, one of the finger. Someone in the chat. So it seems that shots were fired there. Police have been conducting multiple interviews. We've seen that. And we also reached out to Greenfield Police for information and Milwaukee Police. But so far, we do not have any information. We hope to learn more very soon. At 629, good morning to you. You're watching TMJ4 News today this Sunday. I'm Julia Fellow. Let's get a check outside with meteorologist Marissa Walls. And that's our other top story this morning. We are looking at some nice weather this morning. It's very refreshing compared to what we've had over the last couple of days. A live look over West Bend. You can see actually clear skies inland. There are a couple of clouds, but mainly closer to the lake. We are looking at comfortable temperatures too. Right now in West Bend, you are starting off nine degrees cooler than yesterday. If you get a little bit farther to the west, places are starting off 10 to 15 degrees cooler than yesterday. Closer to the lake, about five to 10 degrees cooler. So where does that put us this morning? Well, that puts most of us right near about 60 degrees. 
We do have mid to upper 50s from Whitewater to Beaver Dam. Otherwise looking at low 60, 61 in West Bend, 61 in Waukesha. Same thing in Burlington and Lake Geneva. Closer to the lakefront, it is a bit warmer, 62 in Sheboygan. And then we do have mid to upper 60s as you work your way all the way through Milwaukee. So we are looking at, though, a cooler start to the day this morning. It is refreshing. Dew points are also in the 50s, so it's feeling a lot nicer out there, too, because we do not have much moisture in the air. It should feel comfortable today. Great day to get out and about. Maybe go for a bike ride, go to a local pool. Though, again, I don't know what your threshold is for needing pool uh, weather. If you need 80 degrees, that's not going to happen today. Actually, we're going to only see high temperatures climb into the upper 70s as we move into this afternoon. A lot of sunshine today. We have more sun on the way in the seven day forecast, but also tracking our next chance for showers and storms. I'll have a look at that coming up in just a bit, Julia. All right, Marissa, now on to the COVID-19 fight in Wisconsin. The seven day average of new cases is on the rise. There's a map we're going to show you that shows the level of community spread across the state. According to the CDC, most of the state is experiencing high levels of virus transmission. That's the most severe of four categories. Looking at the vaccination rate of people eligible for the shot 12 and up in our state, 50% have completed the series, and more than 53% have gotten at least one dose. Within the coming weeks, tens of millions of students across the U.S. will head back to school. Some already started in-person learning. Maya Rodriguez reports on the critical questions that parents need to ask as she looks into what lessons school have learned and, in some cases, have not. <music> On this school campus, it's so great to be back. Final preparations are underway for the return of students in just a few short weeks. And we are looking forward to a very successful school year. George Farmer is the principal of Creativity Collaboratory Charter School, known as C3 in Elmer, New Jersey. It's a campus with nearly 200 students in grades fifth through eighth. We first visited the school in the early spring when COVID vaccines were not as widely available as they are now. There were a lot of protocols that were in place that were successful. That includes limiting class sizes to 12 students and placing air filtration systems in each classroom. They're now also setting up outside tents for occasional outside classes. And there is a state ordered mask mandate. We will comply with that mask mandate and whether students are vaccinated or unvaccinated, all students will be required to wear a mask this school year. But for parents trying to navigate sending their kids back to school during yet another year of COVID, the rules around the country are all over the map, literally. While the CDC recommends masks for students nationwide, there is no federal mandate. In Florida and Texas, governors there have banned mask mandates, though some school districts are defying that order. And in Texas, the ban is temporarily on hold because of pending litigation. Colorado and Michigan are recommending masks in schools, but not requiring them. While in California, like New Jersey, masks are mandated in all schools. We are in year three of pandemic education, and yet we still have not figured out how to be more nimble in responding to the needs of our students, to the needs of our families, and to the needs of our educators who are working so vigilantly in the field. Annette Campbell Anderson is a former educator and now deputy director for the Johns Hopkins Center for Safe and Healthy Schools. The center has been tracking school reopenings and COVID protocols across the country. So far, what it seems like our schools have learned is that we can either be open fully or we can be closed fully. We don't have anything in the gray area in between and we need to work on developing backup plans. She says that means it will be up to parents to get more involved and find out what happens if a student in their child's class tests positive for coronavirus and have their own backup plans to deal with it. They should find out what the plan is for students in those classrooms. But you also need to ask about the spaces like the hallways, the stairwells, the cafeteria, spaces that are not typically monitored by teachers. We don't know where the pandemic is going to lead us in the next three to six months. So we have to be prepared for that. We provided our tents for our outdoor learning space. Back at C3 in New Jersey. Educators are vitally important. Principal George Farmer says they have their plans in place, including quarantine quarantining a class and moving it to remote learning if there is a COVID case. I think that that's critical for our students to, to be able to be in person with their teacher, but be also be safe at the same time. As they face another pandemic school year together. In Elmer, New Jersey, I'm Maya Rodriguez.
and going in depth despite surging coronavirus cases, a new survey shows overwhelming majority of parents plan to send their child back to school this fall. The survey commissioned by the Rockefeller Foundation shows as of the end of July, nine out of 10 parents plan to have their kids back to in-person learning. That's up more than 5% from May. The survey also showed 60% of parents said they want more information about what schools are doing to keep their child safe. For more information on the vaccine and where to get tested and masking information for school districts near you, we have it all at tmj4.com slash coronavirus. Up next, evacuations of Afghans continue after the Taliban seize control of the country. The latest we know this morning about the developing situation in Afghanistan. Welcome back. In today's headlines, evacuations of Afghans continue after the Taliban seize control of the country. Richard Engel reports from Qatar. This is one of the biggest evacuations in U.S. military history, and it is certainly one of the most complicated because now the U.S. is trying to pull people out of a country that has collapsed, and they are trying to extract them from the one last remaining place that is controlled by U.S. forces, the military side of Kabul airport. And there are serious security concerns to get to that airport, security risks for Afghans because they have to go through Taliban controlled area with whichever documents they may have because many of them had not finished the application process to get into the United States. Once the people manage to get on their base with or without documentation, the troops there don't have the time, don't have the capacities to process all of these people. They are moving them along, moving them onto airplanes. Initially, many people were being brought to Doha, Qatar, but Qatar was filling up. So now, Ramstein Air Base in Germany, which is another major U.S. base, is starting to receive flights. The larger question remains, what happens, where are they going to go next? Once you start understanding who has been brought out, who is getting on these planes, you have to figure out a place ultimately, whether it's the United States or another country, where they're going to be settled. Richard Engel, NBC News, Doha, Qatar. At 6.40 this Sunday morning, we have much more still to come on TMJ4 News today, including making room in the crew, how Brewers celebrated Hispanic and Latino heritage at last night's game. Let's take a live look outside in West Bend. Feeling good out there. Not a cloud in the sky. Meteorologist Marissa Walson has your seven day next.